Okay, let's go ahead and create an example where we use a flash object via FS commands to communicate with another object, in this case to direct another object within our Autoplay Media Studio project. So we'll go ahead and uh, create a flash movie here. I created an empty flash movie and I created three little buttons on there. So basically you guys can can do that on your own if you like or, or create a, a facsimile. It, it very, it's very quick. I just created uh, three rectangles, added some text to them and converted them to buttons using the inset insert convert to symbol function. Okay, so I've got these three buttons here and I've labeled them indigoros.com, setupfactory.com and styleworkshop.com. Now let's add some FS commands to them. I'm going to click on the indigoros.com button and in my actions editor here I'm going to type on release okay so remember we have to have that event handler to trigger this and then we're going to go ahead and type in fs command and in brackets I'm going to type in the initials IR and that's to symbolize indigo rows for our website indigorows.com we're going to go ahead and click on the second button and as you can see I've already entered the code on release fs command fs sf sorry so it's the equivalent of what we had on our first button and we've got the on release event handler and this time it's triggering instead of ir sf so if i click on indigoros bot indigoros.com button you'll see it's triggering an fs command named ir if i click on the setup factory button it's triggering an fs command called sf if i click on the style workshop button you see i've already added an action to it to trigger an FS command called SW. Okay? So you can see the pattern that I'm using here as I click through my buttons. We're just triggering a simple FS command with a simple uh, two letter code to signify which website to direct our web browser object to. Okay? So we're going to use this menu bar, this button bar, to control a web browser object. So now that we've got these three buttons set up with these FS commands, let's go ahead and export our movie. File, export movie put that in the flash folder of an empty autoplay media studio project folder and then we'll go into our empty f uh, project here and start working okay so I've created a, a small project here 630 by 425 and I'm going to drag my flash menu bar onto my stage and align it with my stage and as you can see I made my flash menu bar 630 pixels wide so it will fit onto the stage. In the attributes area here I'm actually going to go ahead and make sure that it's set to 0 comma 0 and then I'm going to right click on it and pin it so it's set up the way that we want it to be set up. Now I'm going to add a web browser object to our stage. By default I'm going to po point this web browser object at autoplaystudio.com and in the attributes tab I'm going to go ahead and set it up so that the top is at 31 pixels just below our flash object it's going to be then 394 pixels high and it's going to be 630 pixels wide. I'll go ahead and press OK and you can see it's right where we want it so we'll go ahead and right click and pin that web browser object in place. Perfect. Now we're ready to go. Let's go ahead and double click on our FS on our flash object that is and we'll go ahead and add some actions. In the actions area, in the on FS command event area, we'll go ahead and add some if statements. We'll say if and then we're going to use that built-in variable up here as you see in the event variables area EFS command and we'll say EF, if EFS command equals IR then and in the middle of our statement here we're going to put in an action we'll click on the add action button and from the web family we'll use the load URL action and we'll add this action here to send our web browser object to indigorose.com so whenever somebody presses that indigorose.com button, it's going to trigger that FS command IR that's going to be detected, and it's going to trigger this web uh, load URL action that's going to send it to indigorose.com. Let's go ahead and just create a copy of that by selecting it and using Control C, and then we'll paste it twice. Now what we need to do is switch up the values in our second set of actions here and our URL values. Okay, so the second one will be SF, and that'll correspond to setupfactory.com. The third one will be SW, and that'll correspond to styleworkshop.com. So you can see what we're left with here in the end is a series of three if statements, and in each, time, in each if statement we've tested the EFS command variable, the built-in variable, to see if the name of the FS command is either IR, SF, or SW. 
and if it is one of those, we've triggered a corresponding web load URL action that will load the corresponding website into our web browser object. Let's go ahead and press OK and preview our project. I'm going to go ahead and minimize our applications behind here so that we can see quite clearly what we've got. As you can see here, we've got this nice attractive menu bar and we've got our autoplaystudio.com website loaded into our web browser object. The scroll bars are automatically added. And if we click on one of these buttons, it triggers our FS command, which is detected by our flash object here in the onFS command event handler, and then that is triggering a corresponding action which is sending our web browser object to the appropriate website. So there's indigoros.com. If I click on setupfactory.com, you'll see that it indeed loads setupfactory.com. If I click on styleworkshop.com, it loads that website, and so forth. So this is pretty exciting. This is how you communicate from Flash object to a different object within your Autoplay Media Studio application. Let's go ahead and close this down and go back to our Autoplay Media Studio application and our Flash application and just review quickly what we did. So we used a Flash object to control a web object and we did so by creating a Flash movie that had three buttons. Each one has an FS command with a different two-letter code corresponding to a different website and that's illustrated by the labels that we placed on the buttons here. We brought that into our Autoplay Media Studio project, we added a web browser object to the page, and then we went into our Flash objects on FS command area, and we added three if statements that detected that FS command and then triggered corresponding web load URL actions for our web browser object according to which button has been pushed. Okay, so It's a very, very simple example but basically it shows pretty profound communication between these objects so you could similarly as you can imagine create a um, for example a set of transport controls for a video object using your flash object or you could trigger basically any type of uh, formatted output for a label or a paragraph object or you could add items to a list box or you could do you know a whole veritable host of things in this particular case we just created some navigation for a web object okay so let's go ahead and take a look at the next lesson